Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 30th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Today's diary, we got one from Rob. He sort of took a quick informal survey of different multi-factor authentication applications that you typically have on a phone and how easy or difficult it is to move those authenticators to a new phone. Now, of course, uh, most authenticators these days are using some variation of what's commonly known as Google Authenticator or these time-based one-time passwords. They tend to be reasonably easy to move if the application cooperates in allowing you to do this. And of course, many uh, password safe applications are supporting now this form of authenticator. But gets more tricky are sort of uh, proprietary applications which often are specifically designed to not allow the user to register the same multi-factor authentication token on different devices that's often seen as a security feature because it does prevent the unintentional copying of the authenticator in these cases i actually would probably still prefer if uh, organizations are allowing registering multiple authenticators in order to make the move to a different phone easier. And then uh, we also have a new managing human risk report from SANS uh, Security Awareness targeting uh, professionals who are dealing with security awareness programs. So really not so much about the uh, different awareness topics, but really more sort of how uh, these uh, professionals work within organizations. Well, uh, sort of interesting, if you are working full-time on security awareness, you're probably making less than someone who has security awareness as one of uh, the hats they're wearing and not their full-time job. Not so surprising that the more resources you dedicate, the more mature your program tends to be. Of course, that also depends somewhat on the size of your organization, whether or not you can support a department or multiple individuals even that are working full time on security awareness. Back a couple of weeks ago, Microsoft, as part of its June patch uh, Tuesday, did release a patch for CVE 2022-3137, approach uh, escalation vulnerability in the service fabric containers. Now, back then you may not have taken it that terribly serious uh, because it uh, didn't have a very high CSS score, 6.7 after all, only in big quotes here, approach uh, escalation. But uh, this is actually a full container escape. And now Palo Alto did release details regarding the vulnerability with uh, probably enough detail to actually create an exploit for it. That there's quite a bit sort of uh, proof of concept style code included in Palo Alto's blog post. This is exploitable if you are running Linux in the container. Uh, the vulnerability apparently does exist in Windows as well, but uh, not exploitable. So uh, double check that you are patched. And if you're using the Simpra webmail system, apparently 200,000 organizations are doing so. There is a new vulnerability that has been patched that is already being exploited in the wild. CVE 2022-3333, that's uh, the CVE number. That is a file write vulnerability linked to the UNRAR utility that's being used uh, by Simpra. It's one of those typical vulnerabilities uh, with these decompression utilities where uh, the code doesn't uh, properly sort of sanitize any paths that are used inside an archive. And that leads to an arbitrary file write vulnerability, which once you are writing files to the right location does lead to remote code execution. So given that this was discovered as vulnerability after it already had been exploited, certainly something that you need to patch now. 
And the FBI warns that criminals are using deep fake techniques in order uh, to scam their way into job interviews and actually are getting jobs. Uh, the way they're doing this is by essentially uh, having a fake voice track running while they're on a video interview. Now, it's not as good as some of those deep fakes that you may have seen sort of being created because these deep fakes, of course, are being done live, which often doesn't work quite as well. One thing to note here is that the voice track doesn't always quite match up the video that you're seeing. So uh, lip movements may be out of sync. Of course, I've sometimes noticed uh, with some latency issues or so that uh, this may not be the case even if you're not doing a deep fake, but essentially you have to be careful if the only thing that you're ever doing is uh, video interviews or audio interviews that you may not be speaking to the person that you think you're speaking in particular. And that's another thing the FBI points out out if this is combined with compromised PII. The goal here is often then to gain an insider position at the company and then basically access databases and the like in order to compromise them or steal data. Well, that's it for today. Just a quick note, we have the 4th of July weekend coming up, so there will be no Monday podcast. I'll probably do a Tuesday one. We'll see how we'll do it next week, but plan right now is no Monday podcast and probably also no Friday podcast due to travel. So again, We'll see a little bit uh, how much news there is. Usually there is not that much news on these long weekend weeks. Thanks for listening and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.